Oh, hey everybody! This week on Ask Kristen, I've got an email from Stuff Mom Never Told You fan Hannah who writes, I'm a 25 year old woman with a bit of a problem that I'm struggling to really understand. And if I'm struggling with it, there are probably others who are too, so it might make a good video. Boy, were you right. Wait, girl, were you right. <laughs> I'm only two years into marriage and I've developed an aversion to sex. Most sex positive resources are just that. Positive! A whole lot of sunshine, condoms, and daisies. But they never tell you how, all caps, to get over the issues you may have with sex. The problem doesn't lie with my libido, the problem lies with years of thoughts and experiences that have developed into an aversion. I know it can't be fixed overnight. I know that I enjoy sex and that I've enjoyed it in the past. And I really want to have sex with my husband, but the thought of it typically makes me feel uncomfortable and closed off. When I do feel open enough, I usually experience post sadness and sometimes sob uncontrollably for a few minutes. My husband has never made me feel bad about this. In fact, he's incredibly supportive and never, all caps, pressures me to do anything. I've never experienced sexual abuse. The only thing I can say is that I have body confidence issues after gaining some weight and I grew up believing that sex before marriage was wrong and as a consequent felt extremely horribly guilty over my sex drive when I was younger, which I would obviously relieve through masturbation. I am still, all caps, haunted by feelings of sexual disgust, shame, and sadness, even when I thought I had dealt with it and eliminated my church-induced sex shame already. So how, all caps, can I rewire my brain into enjoying sex as something fun and beautiful and affectionate and passionate and normal. Like you said, this is an issue that's not going to fix itself overnight and probably could use some professional help, which is totally fine. I go to a therapist. Ain't no shame in my therapy game. But there are three things I can impart to you and all the other people watching this video who can relate to what you're going through. And the very first one, you're not alone. According to the National Health and Social Life Survey, 32% of American women and 15% of American men reported having zero sexual interest for a number of months in the previous year. The second message I want to impart is that what you're going through, Hannah, I think is a symptom of a widespread epidemic of shame when it comes to female bodies and sexuality. Think about the way we talk about dieting, guilty foods, and cheat days. How embarrassed we're supposed to be if we go to buy condoms, or if we go to buy sex toys, or lube, or if we ask our pharmacist for Plan B, period product commercials that use that mysterious blue liquid because if you use something that looked a little more like menstrual blood, that would be a Scene. Think about all of the social media that have censored breastfeeding women. The word slut and slut shaming. The very term walk of shame. And yeah, guys can do the walk of shame. Oh god, there's a mouse. There's a mouse in my house. There's a mouse in my house. <laughs> Most of us girls are raised to tiptoe along a tightrope of being good girls but not being too slutty but still being desirable but not being too desirable. The thing about religion is it just raises that tightrope up even higher so that if you fall, you fall all the way to hell. And I can say that from first-hand experience because I was raised in a similar environment. And the third and final message I have for you, Hannah, is to stop fretting about the sex. The way you describe being younger and feeling guilty simply for experiencing sexual interest and pleasure and then masturbating, it's understandable that your brain unbeknownst to you, forged a pretty strong connection between sexual pleasure and probably orgasm and guilt and shame. What I would encourage you to do, Hannah, is to reteach your brain that your body is not a source of shame and that sexual pleasure is not dangerous. And I know that you know that in your head. Whatever kind of physical thing that you can do with your body, whether that is going out jogging or lifting weights or mountain climbing, I don't know what kind of mountain you would climb like this. Physical actions that make you feel good, make you feel empowered and start rebuilding that relationship. Also, don't forget or marginalize all of the non-intercourse activities that you can do alone or with your husband that can deepen your relationship and also build that sexual desire. And please repeat after me, your body is not 
a source of shame. So Hannah, while I am not a licensed sex therapist, I hope that this helped a little bit. And folks watching, if this resonated with you, I want to know in what way. If you just need to get out what you're feeling or if you have some tips to share, please let me know in the comments below. And also, if you're someone who's been in a relationship with someone who has had zero sex drive, let us know how you worked through that or if you worked through that. Thanks everybody who watched and commented on last week's Ask Kristen video about female facial hair. Monica Morgan said, when I was drunk once, my male friend was talking about how women don't have to deal with facial hair, and I said that I did. He said eyebrows don't count, and I pointed to my chin and explained that I have three black hairs that grow there, and I shave them off every couple of weeks. Immediately, my female friends jumped in to tell their facial hair routines, all of them saying they thought they were the only ones. Paul though said, I'm a trans woman, and it's a struggle. I actually don't get dysphoria from having facial hair and like the look, but just for my own safety so I'm not murdered, I've been considering having my facial hair medically removed. I wish facial hair on women, cis or trans, was acceptable. Talvo, I wish that being a transgender person did not make you at risk of getting murdered. But as always, friends, ask me your questions so I can give you some answers.